Hey everybody, good morning. It is 22 degrees currently, 31 later today, almost 20 minutes past 7 o'clock. And of course, it's the Friday of the Canada Day long weekend, so we've asked Richard Gwynn to come in. Good morning. Good morning. He was here for his book, Sir John A. Macdonald, The Man Who Made Us, which was a fantastic, uh, just such an interesting interview and, and was so much more fascinating. You think of history and as being sort of dusty and dull sometimes, and what an amazing book and an amazing man. Because it's about people. Right. I mean, people are interesting. Things can be boring. I mean, unless it's a war or something like that. But it's about people. That book was about people. And John A. Madonna was a, as human a person as you're going to meet. And a prior book of yours, which was something we wanted to talk about today, is called Nationalism Without Walls, The Unbearable Lightness of Being Canadian. So that seemed to make sense as we headed into this weekend. What, let's talk about the title, first of all. What, why, how did you land on that well, title? Well, being Canadian really is about as light as any other you know, nationality. I mean, we weren't, it's, God and nature did not intend Canada to exist. We make no sense in terms of a nation state. Uh, and, uh, but we have actually created a state, created a country that actually works rather well. In fact, it works n near the top in the world. We don't know who's the top, but it's, it's in the top decile or something. It's an amazing performance because we, unlike many other people, even if they're oppressed by some beastly neighbor, know who they are. Oh, oh my God. Oop, your water. I That's don't know. Okay. That is very dramatic. That is <laughs> I know. It's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Things can be exciting. <laughs> <laughs> you are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Chris, things, yeah. things can be no, exciting. No, no, but I'm I'm. Oh, I'm someone will bring a towel. Yeah. Okay. Here he Continue. comes right now. <laughs> Eddie's on the run. Anyway. Anyway, we have a country that really makes, if no you sense. were to look at it logically, makes no sense. Why, why, why is that? We've made the best out of it. Because we aren't one people. Normally a country is made of one ethnic group. Mm -hmm. And we are, we, even at the start, we were English, French, Aboriginal. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we are a microcosm of the world, mm -hmm. which is one of our great strengths. But it's a challenge to do that. It's a challenge to make a nation out of people who belong to many, many different nations. How much of being Canadian is, being, is not being American? That at the start was absolutely essential. And we spent about 100 years saying we were better than Americans. I mean, it's built into our psyche mm -hmm. that we are morally superior to Americans. All Canadians know this. We don't like to say it out loud, but it's true. We think that. Mm. We don't need it anymore. In about the last 20 years, we've escaped that. Uh, and we feel it partly because America's in trouble and we're not. We're not partly by luck. We've got logs and rocks to sell, you know. Yeah. And this is a time when you can sell logs and rocks. We do tend well, to get a bit self-righteous, though, especially when the political machine starts to go off the Oh, sure. Trail. We are very smug. We are very self-righteous. Yeah. Uh, and so people uh, laugh any time we fall flat on our face. But we have developed an ability to risk falling flat on our face which was nothing, nothing like Canadians historically. The on the podium at the Olympics in Vancouver was astonishing because we were saying we are going to win a lot of medals. And if you say that out loud, you are risking looking like a fool. Do you think that was uncharacteristically totally Canadian Totally uncharacteristic to do that? Canadian. The, the whole Canadian approach is to be, you know, self-deprecatory and tell jokes on yourself, all that stuff, which is all protective. That's what it is. Where does are that we changing come from? Them? I think. Like I always wonder. I always refer to it as tall poppy syndrome, where no one no. wants to be the tall poppy no. in Canada. Why? Because we were totally overshadowed for a lot of our history by a Britain and then the United States. We were, Britain was the greatest empire since Rome, so you know we were just a tiny part of that. And then the United States was the world superpower, not just in power terms of, you know, military and all that stuff, but in terms of culture. You know, everything in Canadian was borrowed from the United States and all the rest of it. So we felt we were this little guy on the end of the road. Richard, the, the Globe and Mail has been doing um, a series of articles on immigration. And one of the arguments is that, that we can never really form a rich culture until we hit 100 million people. The way, and they argue that that's what happened in the United States. The, the, the moment they were able to retain their own talent and develop their own technology and all of these things was when they hit that mark. Do you agree with that? No, it's, it's not bunkum. quantifiable. It's total bunkum. Yeah. It's just yeah. invented, you know. I mean, in fact, by the way, back in the 19th century, John A. Madonna's the Canadians would talk about 100 million, mm -hmm. you know, because it sounded big and basically we wanted to catch up with the United States. No, we, we should have a growing population. We've got a lot of space, and because people bring new ideas and cultures and so on to us. But we, it's, 
aiming it for 100 million or 500 million, whatever you want. I mean, are we going to rival China? You know, where do we stop? You know, it's, it's, the, the Globe may have invented that just to sort of sell its series. Mm. And I don't say that because I write for the star. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah exactly. Um, what do you think the RCMP, what, what role have they played in the way we've developed as far as a law and order nation and being different from the United States? I think at one time, I mean, unfortunately, they've had troubles, we all know that, but at one time they were absolutely critical. And going back to the 19th century, it was then the Northwest Mounted Police. And they developed a Canada in the West that was totally different from the American West. And it was the first time a Canadian, if somebody came to them and said, what the hell is a Canadian, would say, go and look at the Northwest Mounted Police. In the West, in Canada, the rule was law, law and order. South of the border, exactly the same country, same weather, same people, everything, it was the gun. And if I was the fastest guy to draw a gun of the five of us, I dominated and you did whatever I told you. It was simple as that. In Canada, along comes these strange people with little pillbox hats with their first hats, and they would say, no, the rule of the law is, the rule of the law is here and dominant. And it was totally different. And it, it, it was the first Ins distinctive Canadian institution was the Northwest Mounted Police. So th then they became the Mounties and then Hollywood discovered them and they got their man and all the rest of it, or got their woman, you know, whatever the situation was. But the, um, uh, they, so they then played a secondary role because the one thing the world knew about Canada was Mounties. And they do look very sexy with their hats and the, the job the bright red. Yes, yes. The Is there a way to define Canadian still, do you think? You know, you can you have a picture of a person when you think of an American mm. or even someone who is from France. Like who is a Canadian? Canadian is someone who says who is a Canadian. I know. Right? <laughs> that we is still true. Don't have but that, that is true and we just we should accept it. Because what it does mean, and it, well, this is positive, I mean, it can get tiresome, who the hell are we, you know, and all that stuff. <laughs> but the, the, the plus side is that we're always trying to do something mm -hmm. to justify being a Canadian. So right. we work harder. And at the moment, with some luck, you know, uh, on the, you know, the, the selling of rocks and logs and so on, which, by the way, is what Johnny McDonald's day they did. Nothing has changed. Uh, but the, the, with some luck, we are actually saying, proving that being a Canadian is being one of the most lucky people in the world. We may not, we didn't win first prize in the global lottery, but we won the second prize. Mm. That's not bad. That's not great. bad at all. Um, Richard Gwynn, thank you so much. Uh, and congratulations on the success of your book. Thanks so much. I'm sorry I spilled your water. <laughs> Quite all right. I have your a towel on standby for you right now. <laughs>